What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and while I've been in the process of recording like eight other videos over the past couple of days, we did just get an update from some of the folks over on the D&D Beyond, uh, D&D staff on D&D Beyond about bug fixes. So if you've been dealing with the wonkiness that is adding the 2024 rule set to D&D Beyond, uh, there's been a bunch of bug fixes. I had made a video about this in the past. So let's talk about what those bug fixes are. But I do want to address one thing before we do that. And that is, I wonder, and we'll probably never know, but I've actually seen it start to crop up in my comments here and there that the nature of a lot of these strange bugs or weird interactions with spells and things like that, do you think that that might have been resolved had they followed through with the original plan of just auto updating you to the 2024 uh, 2024 spells because if that happened perhaps some of the bugs that people have been experiencing wouldn't have happened in an attempt to switch to have both versions of the spells available on D, &D beyond i don't know but i have seen uh you know obviously there was a big sentiment to don't take away agency and options which i totally understand right this, this concept of we paid for it don't take it away from us um but now I'm actually starting to see the comments go in the other direction, which I thought was an interesting shift. It's not everybody, but enough people have said it that I thought it was worth mentioning that maybe doing it this way has actually caused more issues than it might have resolved had they just auto-shifted everybody over. All right, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and take a look. So Latia has a post here that says, we'd like to thank you all for your continuing uh, support and reporting the issues. First, let's talk about what's been updated. So first of all, Barbarian Rage Damage Bonus now accurately scales with their levels. This is important uh, and useful here. Warcaster can be selected as a feat. I didn't realize this. This apparently was just a cleric-only issue uh, because actually I realized that on my wizard, I was able to select the new version of Warcaster. It is apparently just tied to cleric not being able to select warcaster i guess so that's now an option for clerics druid the 2024 druids number of prepared spells now reflects the table in the 2024 player's handbook that's great a small little adjustment there to make that a little bit better monk deflect attack redirect attack now uses two martial arts dice instead of one which is accurate and warrior of mercy's monk's hand of healing now scales appropriately Rangers are now able to choose ability score improvements, not just feats. Yeah, that was a janky thing as well for Rangers specifically. Uh, 2024 Rangers strength saving show, uh, throw should now show proficiency. Great. Fey Wanderer subclass now shows the correct spells. All right. Sorcerers. Sorcerers should now have access to the spells granted to them by their subclasses. We love that for them. The Divine Soul Sorcerer subclass is now working as intended. The features show up as abilities slash actions rather than spells. And then for Warlock, subclass spells now consume spell slots, which they were not doing previously. And the following Warlock invocations are now supported. Devouring Blade, Eldritch Smite, Gift of the Protectors, Investment of the Chain Master, and Life Drinker. I know I had seen some of you say they were missing the opportunity to choose the uh, Investment of the Chain Master that was removed and has now since been fixed. All right, looking at species, all Dragonborn species, Draconic Ancestries have gained, have regained the use of their breath weapons. We love that. Goliaths can no longer use their large form at first level, which makes sense. It's set for fifth level. Tieflings Infernal Legacy spells should reflect their charisma bonus in the DC. I actually saw this uh, on one of my son's characters where it was not reflecting the charisma bonus, so that looks to have been fixed as well. All right spells spells that were incorrectly listed at will will now consume spell slots i noticed this specifically with like the uh, shadow touch and fey touched uh feats that seems to have been fixed spells from the elemental evil players companion can should now be marked correctly as legacy for ice knife vitriolic sphere and thunderclap which were all spells that are in the 2024 players handbook Cure Wounds, a healing now scales correctly and has been placed in its proper school of magic. Yeah, this was a weird thing where the first level version of Cure Wounds was healing 2d8, but the second level and upcasting versions were only adding one additional d8. Uh, 2024 Shillelagh's Damage Die now scales correctly, and the Dual Wielder sh uh, now should now show up for characters with a dexterity score of 13+. We talked about dexterity for uh, for feats. Medium Armor Master now shows the correct prerequisites. Skulker should now show up for characters at level 4+. Plus. 
Backgrounds. When choosing the entertainer background for a 2024 character, the incorrect abilities were displayed when assigning plus one to three ability scores. This has been fixed. Uh, other common sign language is now available as a selectable language. Extra attack now shows two attacks per action instead of one as intended. We've also resolved some text issues where things were mislabeled, misspelled, or incorrectly written, as well as incorrect tooltips. All right, so this is the ongoing 43-page uh, forum thread on D&D Beyond detailing the uh, the ongoing bugs and issues that people have been experiencing here on D&D Beyond regarding the 2024 rulebooks. So that is a lot of light, uh, nice updates to it. I'm very curious to see if something like, uh, I, again, I mentioned earlier in that last video that the Life Cleric, for example, uh, had this issue where Life Cleric could not have their the aid spell auto-prepared as a domain spell, which was previously uh, an issue. I don't know if that's been resolved. But, hey, at least we know that the D&D Beyond team has worked pretty hard over the last week to try to resolve several of the issues that we've seen crop up over that, you know, one-week time period. Because remember that next, what is it, next Tuesday is official full-blown launch of the book for everybody everywhere. So we're hoping to have that all resolved by then so that when, you know, or as much as possible resolved by then, I guess would be the case. So that way when the player, new players or regular players that aren't paying for early access get access to the book, they'll have a working version or a better version, I guess you could say, here on uh, D&D Beyond. And I'm just going to check on that for you. Aid looks to be be auto prepared i believe no it is not listed as always prepared so that is still an issue for the life domain cleric aid is not always prepared so either way again it does i'm checking it does appear that the healing has been adjusted so that's one step in the right direction although i wish that for example for the life domain cleric when you were to cast a cure wound spell it would actually add the benefits of the life domain healing feature to it Unfortunately, it's not the case. It doesn't do that either, but oh well. So anyway, uh, let me know. Or wait, maybe it does. No, it doesn't. I lied. <laughs> um, but anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this in the comments down below. And I'll keep you updated as more information begins to change and update and change logs and what's not over here on D&D Beyond for the 2024 Player's Handbook. And then again, obviously, we'll probably roll this right into the Dungeon Master's Guide, but... Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.